sorry we are late coming back from work everyone all right um today is um another friday thank god it's friday thank god it's friday y'all we're starting at 10 17 today and you always know we always do 30 minutes or maximum one hour so we give God the glory. It's on. It's a Friday, and um, let me get something here. Oh, So we thank God it's Friday and um, I was just uh, thinking about something that I uh, wanted to share with you guys before we start off this domestic violet. Next time I'm going to write something to show you all like I showed you guys during the rip that anyone caught in domestic violet must be punished. Oh yeah, because they are ready to kill someone they are ready to murder someone they don't have no pity they don't have no sympathy so injustice cannot go with domestic violence and that is why jesus addressed the marginalization and abuse of the woman by the men who should have protected them let us pray father in the name of jesus i bless your holy name we thank you thank god it's friday end of work we thank you for Everything that's happening in our life, but I, even in the midst of it, you've done so much. You've done enough. If you have not done another thing, oh God, you've done so much and you've done enough. Thank you so very much. We're very grateful for all you have done, what you're doing, what you're about to do to our children, to our family, to our home, to our wives, to our husband. Father, we just thank you for the job you gave us to put a roof on our head. So put a, 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 um, a foot on the table and a shoe on our feet. Thank you, God. Only you can do it. Thank you, God, for where everyone has looked down on us and say, who are you? You turn our life around and they, and they come and say, how are you? Thank you, God, for taking us from our zero to our hero. Thank you, God, for taking us from our mess to our miracle. Thank you, God, for taking us from uh, our pain to our power. Thank you, God, for taking us from our disappointment to our appointment. Thank you, God. And I can go on and on, on but after all, I don't thank you for your love, your agape love, the love that you love us first and send your begotten son and he died for us. See, God, we're grateful, grateful. And as we're about to go into this topic, which is so dear, and very touching, which a lot of our woman beings all are all over the world. As I'm discussing this this uh, topic, people are dying through this topic because of ignorance. People are dying because of lack of knowledge. My people, my Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. People are going through. They don't know how to speak. They don't know where to speak. They don't know who to speak to. They are scared, very fearful. But your Bible say you didn't give all the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power love and shine mind papa wherever anyone is, is all over the world on the sound of my voice after or before that is going through domestic violence be a female be a male be a children be a co-worker baba i beg you baba be cool madam come and help so that they will be they will have the heart to discuss with someone even if they feel so someone the abusing and say i will kill the father don't let them believe in those trash or that rubbish or lies of the satan satan come to steal kill and destroy father help them to be able to open up and say something to someone that will help them go through it in the name of jesus this platform you open for us to discuss these uh, hard topics to father we're, we're very grateful and open our ear our heart 
very wise for us to hear and for us to learn and share to our people, to our friends, to our neighbors, because we don't know who is going to domestic violence right now. And the cemetery is full of people who died innocently, ignorantly, without knowing what to do. Thank you, God. I cover this place with blood of Jesus. Even as your daughter about to say, Father, speak to me, speak to me, and uh, speak out of me, and use me as your cloth, use me as your mouthpiece, use me all in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. We are in the topic domestic violence and we started that last week and I'm so glad that we are here again. A lot of things happened so that this cannot hold. But God is a mighty God. We rather come late than not doing it at all. We rather, we rather, it's rather late than never. Like some people, someone will say. So Jesus addressed the marginalization and abuse of these women by the men who should have protected and provided for them so they could flourish. By speaking to those and other women in the scripture, Jesus brings them back into the position who uh, who abuses is the sinner, but some Christians have attended to justify or excuse using scripture to back up to back them up however this goes against the very nature of god who is love god is love god is love anytime god is love god is love agape love god does not like his children to be treated wrongly my brothers and sisters no 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 i don't care how people read the bible but don't turn the bible upside down god is love god even loved the sinner before they even turn god loves us when we're still a fitting rag even now that we're fitting like rag god is still loving us we are dust we're going to back to dust god is still loving us us. remember i said in his bible no he looked down nobody's righteous he just we're just living in the grace of his own righteous in the grace of his righteous for of his son who died for our sin we are re living in the grace of the blood of jesus so god is love the bible views all forms of domestic violence as sin any type of uh, domestic violence, my brothers and sisters, is a sin. The man who hates and divorces his wife, says the Lord, the God of Israel, does violence to one who one he should protected, says the Lord of Almighty. By the time you're going through domestic violence, you divorce, you are a sinner. You've sinned. And instead of protecting that woman, you are creating violence for the person. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful. Break covenant through injustice. Breaking covenant through injustice. You have worried the word, the Lord with your words. How have we worried him, you ask? By saying all who do evil are good in the eyes of the Lord. That is wrong. He is pleased with them or where is the God of justice? The God of justice is still there, my brothers and sisters. The Lord examined the righteous in Psalm 11, 5. He hates, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates with passion, with passion. And Colossians 3, 19 says, husband, love your wife and do not be ash with them. That means husband, love your wife, do not uh, 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 commit domestic violence with them. Do not, do not do, do any violence with your wife or with your husband, including verbal abuse, the words of reckless peers like words, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Don't go and be speaking to someone saying things that will hurt some people. I have a friend who always says, oh, those words hurt. And when they say he hurts because you never know their background, how they come. And abuse is not the person that was beating someone. Abuse can be emotional. Abuse can be word. When a man keep on telling a woman, you are useless, you don't look good, you are this or that. Or a woman start telling a man, you are useless. That word keep on ringing on the person's head. That is domestic violence. Emotional domestic violence is the worst scenario because nobody is seeing the scar. The tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit, my brothers and sisters. But now you must also get rid of, read yourselves of all such things as 
anger, rage, malice, slander, futile language. These are the things that cause domestic violence. Furthermore, God's art is to deliver the abuse. And you can check that in Psalm, Psalm 5. Any form of abuse then is an unacceptable behavior that directly defines God's calling for Christ's followers to relate to each other. All right? I, to exhort us to protect ourselves from violent people, we have to be careful the people we mingle with. We have to be, even when we get to married, I'm going to get to that place soon. So the person who abuses is sinning. And the victim who wants to live is not, is not uh, uh, who who want to live is, is is insane. Why not everyone has the ability to live an abusive partner? It is not easy. People are scared. People are threatened. God act on behalf of the abusive people. We can see throughout the Bible that God is not passive about violence committed against women and about violence committed about men either. God act defensively and act compassionately through Jesus Christ to call all people to love, mercy, act justly. Love, mercy, and act justly. And nature healing and justice for everyone, most especially when power is used to arm others to tell the truth. When man abuses a woman or a man abuses a man, God sees it and God's heart breaks. God don't like it. God has breaks for the abused. God has uh, uh, clearly through the life and death of Jesus to take an ultimate stance, ultimate position against all forms of violence. Oppression, marginalization, and abuse, declaring that God is love. And God's love will not stand passively or silently when women are abused. And you can check that in 1 John 4, 8. God repressed oppression. He, uh, 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 oppression, when people oppress you, God repress it, God don't like it. If you feel oppressed by your spouse, talk about it. Pray more about it because continuous holding it in dangerous is continuous holding it in is dangerous, very dangerous. You can blow up like a bomb. Humility should be the watchword in any union. Knowing how the book of Philippians said, uh, uh, two seven teaches us that Jesus, despite being God, took the, the status of a servant and humbled himself on the cross for us and his Father. Domestic violence is not just a center on the physical alone. The bruises, the bruises, the scars, the beating, it is no, it has another angle. There are scars you don't see, like I was saying, emotional beatings and bruises that, uh, and bruises that you uh, are not visible to the eyes. It is called emotional violation. Emotional domestic violence, it is a very bad one because nobody sees it. You are the only one going through it. The psychological effect of this kind costs deeper than the blade. There is a blade. Very few came out of it unless by the grace of God. That's why some of them in the cemetery today, a lot of them don't come out of it because they keep on stalking it. Most domestic violence start from this stage where the initial victim ends up being the physical abuser and an enemy of the public. Make God the center of your settlement. Make God the center of your life. Make God the center of your settlement. Make the word of God key of your heart, key of your life. God is love, like I keep on saying, embrace this lifestyle of Jesus on earth, which is that love. God wants us to live in the path of love because it's love and uh, resisting violence. All type of violence should be resisted. God wants us to resist violence. You are welcome on social media, hand uh, 0449. God bless you as you join. God like God wants us to resist in, uh, violence. Even in the retaliation of violence, we have to resist it. The retaliation of violence against us taking a leap from the doctrine of Jesus Christ, which we are to turn the cheek, the left cheek, where the right is smit. Domestic violence, I call romantic violence. Because first of all, before you get a romantic, uh, domestic violence, you find out that uh, it is uh, something that starts with a romance. It's something that starts with love. It's something that starts with caring and love of each other. 
So anytime you see domestic violence it, within two people, it didn't just start off them, start just like that. It was something that just started from nowhere. But it started with love. When I talk of couples, it started with love because you have to love each other to court, to start being husband and wife, to start living it together or whatever it is. So I call domestic violence, I call romantic violence as, it's, as I like to call it because of its nature. Violence that occurs between lovers, either in marriage, either in courtship, either between lovers in, in, in that marriage or courtship relationship. The state where one spouse is trying to get control of the other is violence. When two people are together, even a co-worker, uh, partners and in any relationship, you're supposed to be equal. So my brothers and sisters, don't, uh, be, you know, from now on, be careful in any relationship you are. Every time somebody is trying to uh, control you, to keep you in a place where you'll be on control, be careful because domestic violence just don't start like that. They start beating you. No, no, no. They start hitting you. No. It starts from somewhere. They want to sit down. Oh, why are you talking? You stupid. You know, you don't know how to do this. When they start giving you those words, those words, those words are not good. You're you are, you are welcome, my brother. You're welcome. God bless you as you join us on the Facebook so, so they start with, uh, oh, you are nonsense, you are useless. And, you know, like I said, world hurts a lot of people. Anything you say with your mouth, you cannot take it back. So when you call that your friend, your co-worker, your husband, your wife, stupid, useless, you're going to be in there, you die. That is domestic violence. Emotional domestic violence is the worst thing anybody can go through. And coming on this platform, like I said, you will learn a lot of different things. When they mention domestic violence, people don't think it was men, men beating women. No, 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 no. My brothers and sisters, the, the civilization, the life have changed. Sin have taken over the world. Like I said last week, we talked about domestic violence in the concept of the Bible. Sin have taken over the world that today, women are abusing men too. Domestic violence is taking place. Men will sit down and a woman will come and hit a woman. I know a friend that a woman will come, he's sleeping, and his lady came and using a very strong uh, uh, object and hit this man when he's sleeping. My brothers and sisters, when we sleep, we're dead. Until angel of God come to wake up, angel of life come to wake us up. If not, we're already dead. So when you hit somebody when he's sleeping, I don't care even if the man is a, is a cheap ass or is a power mic, the person will die. But today, the man, the man survived because he shot into the sleep and said, Oh my God, when he was sharing with me, I said, Oh my God, he went through all this. So don't even look at it, people, male and female all over there that anytime they talk domestic violence, it's men beating women. No, women abusing, abusing women and men these days, abusing men the, to the extent that, you know, men's own is even the worst because they don't know how to talk about it. A man would be so ashamed to tell uh, his co-friends in their uh, place, their, their, uh, their cave or whatever they join and say, oh, do you know my wife abused me? Or do you know my girlfriend abused my co-worker? They'll be so ashamed and they'll be dying on it. So we got to be careful. The state where one spouse is trying to get control of the other is violence, my brothers and sisters. The Bible recognizes that violence and abuse exist in the society from Genesis to Revelation. But the Bible is also clear though that God opposes those who oppress others. God opposes those who abuse others. God opposes those who bring, uh, control others and bring them to a place where they cannot even speak for themselves. That is why Jesus come, my brothers and sisters. Good news. That is why Jesus come. And when he died in that cross of Calvary, he was dying for the abuse that you are getting today. He was dying for the beating. He was dying for the insult. He was dying for the, for the, for the, for the disappointment. He was dying for everything women beings are doing to you. You don't know who to speak to. He was dying. But today he gave us a platform. Not just dying, but he gave us a platform so that we can speak. Like I always say, we are here to help you, my brothers and sisters. 
Last time we, we finished all the communication in marriage, it was amazing how messages were coming from Facebook Messenger with people going into our, our uh, 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 website, they're sending messages. And now we went to rape, it was amazing. You, you don't know what people are going through. And now domestic violence, when we started yesterday since I came back from travel, it was amazing how people are going through my brothers and sisters. And these are things, hot topics that church should be talking about. And that's why the Adventures of Christ is so different because we serve humanity. We serve God and we serve his people. We make sure God's people are okay. They are fine. And that is why we discuss it. So people that are going through domestic violence, they don't know who to talk to. They say, if you talk, you die. Yes, they've been texting and we'll be speaking to them. So this is domestic violence part two. Domestic violence, my brothers and sisters, is not the normal in the house quarrels uh, or between husband and wife. No, not at all. It is way beyond that. It is more than the mouth making quarrels or occasional slaps from spouse. Not that. When quarrels have arrived at a place where injuries and life threatening damages are done to each other or one of the other spouse there we are talking of domestic violence but what i'm saying here is start from little by little so when you see it coming be you a man be a woman be you a male be a female being in the court in a, a courtship being in a marriage being i don't care what it is even a co-worker even in the church please run like the uh, you know what happened to joseph joseph run when potiphar wife hold him they back onto the bible say run and left his jacket yes when you start seeing that my brothers and sister you don't know who to talk to we are available and message us on our facebook messenger the vice of christ go to our website fill out the paper form we call you wherever all over the world we don't you don't burn your credit we call you we go through this with you because god said i would i should do greater things than what he did one in this world every time jesus touches people or touches a land or go into a place their life never remained the same and the same thing he has sent his daughter the plot of god that anytime we bring all these topics you go onto our youtube we have so much preaching and topics and authentic talk and church services and bible study we are going places and people life are being uh, uh, uh changed and saved from all these atrocities that people are doing so injuries and life-threatening damages then we're talking of domestic violence what makes it domestic not naturally because it happened at your home no but because it happens with someone with whom you have no need to put up your guide as said person is a spouse or as a such a family member you you know like i always tell people your enemy cannot hurt you to a place your family member can hurt you say that again rev i know that's right i will repeat myself your enemy cannot hurt you to the extent that your family will hurt you. You know why? Enemy will hurt you from far. They don't know who you are. They don't know your, what you're saying. They don't know where you are. They don't know your problem. But your family, you sleep with them, eat with them, play with them, joke with them. But in their sense, it comes back to this domestic violence. People who have the violent tendency in them are always patient to carry out their act. You know, little by little, like a baby who is learning how to walk. They take their time. They don't, they don't rush into it. Look at her head that uh, a man just killed his wife and killed his mother-in-law and killed himself last week. What are all this? It boils down to domestic violence. Somebody saw that coming. But, oh, it's my husband, so no problem. Oh, I'm fine. When you see people going through, people you love going through, please run and start looking for a way to help them out. Because, like I will go down to tell you, it could be an action plan ahead. It could be a temperament of the individual. The person cannot, the temperament is just crazy. He cannot handle his temperament. It, it, could, it could be the upbringing or societal influence. And it can also be demon possessed. When you love someone and later you start hitting the person to the extent of killing the person, that is demon possessed. I've 
have, you know, recounted so many things. Tempromancy, it might be plan ahead. It might be demon possessed. But whatever makes you destroy things during a quarrel, you know, people just quarrel, they just destroy things and fall things. Whatever makes you do that during a quarrel with your spouse or pick up life-threatening object as a measure of using against your spouse, my brothers and sisters, yes, you do have the tendency of being an accused of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the victim can also be accused. If you ask me, domestic violence is not of physical damage alone. Not at all. It's not, it's not physical damage alone. What of the emotional trauma? The emotional trauma is the worst thing in domestic violence. That some spouse go through at the expense of the other spouse. Excessively emotional patients can lead to depression. They keep on holding down and they don't know who to talk to. Not all depression leads to suicidal. But in some cases, depression can change a quite gentle, gentle and gentle and lamb like a spouse to become a monster. You keep on doing to that person who is nice in the relationship. It's working in a relationship. At the time, the person cannot talk it, take it no more. That that uh, quiet, gentle person, that uh, lamb, quiet, loving spouse or friend or co-worker or mother or daughter or son cannot hold it no more. You become a monster and you who are the cause of the depression becomes a victim. When this innocent person reacts over stored up of the anger of yesteryears, of months, of weeks, of years. Ask yourself, my brothers and sisters, how could a marriage birth in love? How could two people who come together and start saying how much they love each other, born in a different place, a different parents, a different pers uh, perspective, a different background, come and love each other? leads to death of one of the spouses simply because one had hunger issue really what a shame the first question should be how well do you know the temper of your spouse before marriage you know we talk about all this this platform authentic talk we talk about deep deep things people don't want to discuss but after you go through us if you're not there to see that's why tango for technology you can go to our video you know bring it together with the woman you a man you are cutting or in marriage if you're already in marriage and you're going through this my brothers and sisters come to tell you it's not too late you can still make a change but you listen to this with the, your partner the first question should be how well do you know your spouse before you marry your spouse so if you have not married you are blessed now because now you can go back and start thinking it might sound funny but necessary and important very important just as important if not more than important than the genotype result being required before marriages are allowed these days, before you marry, they'll say, oh, go and bring your genital uh, 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 test, you know, to see if you are SSS, if you are A1, if you are this. Because people are, people are just tired of people lying. People are tired of people just coming to a relationship with a different motivation. Relationship should come with the motive of love and love and love. But these days, people are going into relationship, the motive of love, uh, of money, motive of uh, material things, motive of wealth, beauty, and some and all that. No, my brothers and sisters, that is not what base marriage. That is not where you can base relationship. Relationship is more to this. Marriage is more to this. So just as important of asking how temper, you know, how did the person handle his temperamency? Can he be, can he handle uh, something and just don't shout or beat someone? You got to start thinking about that, especially if you have not married or you're still, you're still in a relationship. Or if you're married, you can still start immediately. It's not too late. The temper of your spouse is a major and if not the main factor of any union. Yes, yes, especially if you know you are such that love to talk and fight. You need a man that will be patient and calm. 
If you're a man that loves to talk and fight, you need a woman that is patient and calm. But if two of you cannot handle each other like a bomb, this one is talking, this one is talking, think about that. If you are compatible, the temper of your spouse is major. And if not the main factor of any union, more than 80% of domestic violence are committed by people with uncontrollable temper. They can't control their temper. Even the Bible said we, we need the fruit of the spirit. And one of the fruits of the spirit is uh, uh, self-control. And how do you have self-control? You can't be having self-control if you don't have patience. So if you check this, the, the fruit of the spirit in the Bible, all of them goes together. But most especially, you have to have self-control. Because if, you can, if you are, your temper is uncontrollable, you cannot control your temper, this temper can either make you a murderer or a mother. So that you murder someone or somebody will murder you. Because the one you abuse, the one they will just take a knife and that's it. Domestic violence, my brothers and sisters, is very important. We don't take it for granted. It is serious. Next week, I'm going to write like I wrote for rape. For rape. I said I have a paper when I said, any rapist, be a man or woman, who cares? But you are going to be, uh, you, 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 have to be, you have to go through the justice, no injustice. You have to pay for what you did for that person you raped. The world have turned upside down that what men do to women before now, women are even doing it to men. So it's just crazy, very crazy. And it becomes so crazy because even if they've done it to men, men are so ashamed to talk about it. As women are more ashamed to talk about it. And things are start going, we start losing loved ones. We start losing loved ones. In case you are welcome, my brother, God bless you. We start losing our brothers and sisters. Every time somebody die, I don't know about you, but every time somebody die in the world, all over the world, that is your brother dying. That is your sister dying. Every time a man committed uh, abuse and abused uh, a, a woman or rape a woman, or every time a man, a woman is raped, uh, a man or abuse a man, that is your brother. That is your sister. According to the Bible, what did the Bible say in Genesis? He said, We are created in one image of God, not two images of God. We have one God. I don't know about you, but I have one God, the God Almighty, the Afando Maker, the creator of heaven and earth. So every time we're losing people into the jail, we're losing people into the death of death, we're losing people in the cemetery, pastoral cemetery. The brothers and sisters are there with big knowledges, but ignorant of all this. No platform to talk about this. Nobody want to talk about this. They're so shaken and afraid. And they come to a place when their temperaments cannot control their te They cannot control it and they start killing each other. What is jealousy rate of your spouse? That's another question. You know, the first question is that what is the temperaments of your, of your spouse? Now, the second question, people take these things for granted. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, she's, he's handsome. Oh, he has money. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. These are the secondary things for having a relationship. These are the secondary things in being in relationship, courtship, dating, or marriage. The main things is what I'm telling you today. So if you don't know, please know now because the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. One question, second question is what, what is the jealous rate of your spouse? Love do not cover up for jealousy at all. Say I say so. It is a killer and in the most cases the crime are often committed before realization is achieved. You know? The people that will commit uh, domestic violence, uh, they'll be doing and beating and shouting and shouting, but immediately they use that in a kid and say, oh, oh, because you know that they are demon possessed. Because immediately the demon will leave them. Immediately they will realize themselves. Immediately they will start saying, I don't know what I'm doing. I was not, I didn't know. What is it that you don't know? It's unfortunate. My brothers and sisters who are watching, who are going to watch later, please share and share and share and like because these are things that are killing our brothers and sisters, our family members, our church members, especially Christians. Do you know the funniest thing? The Christians are dying more on domestic violence. The Christians are dying more on rape. 
they are dying more on all these things lack of communication in their marriage why because people people come and tell them oh the bible says so be quiet you know stay there you know you don't have to do divorce so stay there and die go the devil in the pit of hell that is where the joy will say it over go punish the devil in the pit of hell even Jesus is against domestic violence. It's against partners who are going to be abusing each other to die. No, God is against abuse. And that's why I started with the concept. Every time I start a topic, I start in the concept of the Bible. So stop reading the Bible upside down, my brothers and sisters, Christians. And as Christians, we are so ashamed to talk about our problem to our brothers and sisters because, you know, sometimes we tell them they carry it like you gave them Washington Post in America or Observer in Nigeria to God just go and run their mouth. So you just have to look for somebody that you can be accountable to, somebody that will carry your problem to God and between you and him or her. And that is what it is. When you reveal those secrets between you and then the person will die with your secret. You pray God to give you such person and we are here divine students of christ we are here to help you my brothers and sisters and all of you that are sending messages that are going through it i'm praying for you i'm standing in god praying for you that your man and your woman they will repent and you will not die in this journey in the name of jesus this is your wilderness or divine students of of of, of uh, div, uh, domestic violence you will not die in it in the mighty name of jesus christ god will we rescue you all, God. We we protect you, God. We guide you, and God. We heal because that's a healing. You need healing to do right. So realization is achieved. These two is to very future of a of a domestic violence. What is the jealousy? Love do not cover up for jealousy. It is a killer, and in most cases, the crime are often committed before realization is achieved. This too is a very high future of domestic violence. Test, test these things before marriage, before relationship, before courtship to save yourself and your spouse. Test all these things. Everything, relationship or marriage is not about money, it's not about beauty, it's not about how tall or, or, or how beauty or uh, complexion. Or, no, no, no. Test these things and you will know, my brothers and sisters, you are getting into a good relationship. Test the temperaments of your man, the temperaments of your woman. See what you will do when you get angry. Learn to unbottle Learn to release. Learn to talk about stuff. Don't hold it. Because the more you hold it, the more it's like you are a bomb. And when you bust that bomb, you know, when bomb, boom. Boom. That's it. And the boom might be a death. Boom might be a murderer. Boom, boom might be you murdered somebody or somebody murdered you. And I pray that is not our portion in the name of Jesus. God bless you, my brother, my uh, my people there in uh, Instagram. Hello, uh, uh, God bless you. God bless you. And I wave back to all of you. Everyone is social media, even you too. God bless you, all of you as you join. And I pray that the Lord will help us with this topic. It's a hard topic. We're going to be coming to help all of us. So learn how to be a bottle as a man, or as a woman. Too much stored up of bad vibes. In you can lead to depression. That's what I tell people. Uh, I say it this way. And, uh, and you can copy from me. Uh, I don't deal with people who makes me unhappy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are people I have on my phone. I say do not pick. I don't delete them. Don't, don't delete them. Because if you delete them, they call you. You know that is them. So I'll give you another trick. You just put their name. Do not pick. So even when my kids picking up, they say, mommy, do not, they don't even talk about it because the English is say, do not pick. Anybody that takes my joy away, anybody that call me and bring me to my past or bring me to things that make me start crying off, I cut them off. I put their phone, I, in fact, I block them. Huh? My name is Blocker. I, I blocked 17 of them yesterday. Amen, <laughs> somebody. I keep on blocking because I got no time for that nonsense. Mm -mm. Life is too short, my brothers and sisters, to waste your time with chickens. And I keep on saying, you don't waste your time with chickens. I, I, last time I checked, I'm not a chicken, baby. I'm an eagle. 
and eagles, we sell. We go to the highest store to get our food. We don't eat on the ground, baby. So don't deal with chickens. Chickens are the domestic violence people. Chickens are the gossip people. Chickens are the people that will bring you problem to your marriage. Welcome, my husband. Chickens are the people that doesn't even care about your, your well-being, about your family. They can come and run their mouth and lie and just... They want to, they will, chickens we will, will make a phone call. They will buy data to call, to know where you fought, to know what is going on with you, especially when success comes into your life. But when you are going through, they are happy on their own, they are doing well. But chickens don't want to anybody to above them. My brothers and sisters, we can't be chickens in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Tell them, I say, we got to be eagles and lions. Hallelujah, somebody. So test these things before marriage to save yourself and your spouse. Learn to unbottle too much stored up or bad vibes in you can lead to depression because you can't let out the air of pain for whatever reason. Holding it back, such as such persons are prone to be domestically violent as their first outburst. Their first outburst, like I said, is a bomb might just end them in the prison for either murder or manslaughter. Above all, name is damaged forever. Your life will never remain the same. Whether you are the one being abused or whether you are the one accepting the abuse or whether you are the one stalking the abuse, abuse can come in a different way, but all of them is not it's not good. It's not something you want to take, my brothers and sisters. It's something you work on. And in the marriage, because most of the time, up in the marriage, I told you last time, I said statistics shows that the coronavirus, coronavirus did not just come as coronavirus. It came with a lot of things. You know how the Bible said, devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. Coronavirus came to steal, kill, and destroy. He didn't just kill, he destroyed, and he's still destroying. You know, during the corona, before the coronavirus, men and women have the, the, uh, the uh, opportunity to say, oh, baby, I'm going to work. I love you. I'm going to work. They lie, and sometimes they just they run away. They use their job to cover their face. Well, when domestic, when uh, coronavirus came and tied them down in the same home, Kalebo Salate, they didn't know what to do with themselves. The man cannot withstand the woman. The woman cannot withstand the man. The man and the, the parents cannot withstand the children. Because you know what? First of all, the foundation, the Bible says in, in uh, Psalm 11, it says, when the foundation is crooked, what would the righteous do? Come on, come on, come on, come on. We are talking, I'm talking here. Am I communicating? Somebody shout hallelujah and say amen. If the foundation is crooked, what would the foundation do? Well, what would the righteous do? The foundation already be crooked before coronavirus. The parents did not parent their children right. The husband did not love the wife right. The wife did not love the husband right. Everybody is just going, the children go to school, the husband go to work, the wife go to work, one is upstairs, one is downstairs, they say men's cave, men this, women this, they're hanging out, my girl this, they go shopping, window shopping, nonsense, rubbish, and the children on the game, and playing, they don't know when to read their book, they don't know when to go to sleep, everybody is scattered, and now coronavirus came. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Satan sneak into their house like a snake, uh-huh. And coronavirus came and said, everybody got to sit in the house and kill themselves. My name is Domestic Violent. And I've been trying to come, but I don't know how to come. So now I can bring you guys together. And now people come in, I mean, Domestic Violent, sometimes the police officers, they don't have enough to send to homes because of Domestic Violence. So this thing that god gave us this platform divine Soldiers of christ to be discussing these things we don't take it for granted it is serious serious it is important because if you come to us and we're discussing it i will find out a place where you need help we'll send you to a place where people that have learned people that spiritually we we bring them together we all work with you you are not alone in this journey my brothers and sisters you're not alone it does not matter which one you fall into either as a prey or predator the cross of domestic violence leaves a family shattered for life it cannot change 
So many people that have died domestic violence said that their mother have lost a woman, uh, a, 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 a daughter, or their, uh, their parents have lost a son. On the other side, two sides, there's nothing you can do about it. The cross of domestic violence leaves a family shattered for life. Somebody's crying. Somebody's losing his daughter or son. The, 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 the man that just killed his mother and killed his uh, mother-in-law and his wife. Today, he killed himself too. Families have lost three people. For, for what? For demon possessed? For what? For temperamency? For what? For not asking questions before we get into this. So, something we call marriage. Relationship. Domestic violence is not only for homes, it's for co-workers too. You at work and you just have someone just, you know, violating you and just coming and bu bullying you. No, no, no. Give the person that hand. Stop! I don't tolerate this nonsense. Don't do this again. And the person continue. Report them. Call on someone. Talk to them about it. Because you never know. The next one will be a knife. The next one will be a gun. The next one will be a hitting. So don't take anything for granted. So it's just little. He just say you are stupid. No. You love someone. You don't call them stupid. I tell people. You love someone. You can have an argument. Agreement. No. Yeah. Yeah. Husband and wife or friends or co-workers. Parents. You can have an, uh, you know, disagreement. But you don't have to call somebody stupid though. Or you are useless. Or you are mad. No. You can have an argument. But those big words, you don't have to say it. Because word hurts. And as you're saying, it's hurting some people. They don't know how to handle it. Where life of the presumed victim is lost, the accused has the arm of the law to face. So whether you kill someone or someone is killing you, somebody's going to jail anyway. Somebody's going to die anyway. So what is the need of all this nonsense that we allow the devil, the, 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 the devil come steal, kill and destroy. But God come, Jesus come to give us life abundantly, my brothers and sisters. After this, we are about to be gone. Let us have life abundantly. How do you have life abundantly? Be around people that will make you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing like I tell people is a therapy. And you know what? I call people that when I call them, they're on the other side laughing and I'm on the other side laughing. I will laugh with us down like a bomb too. And that's it. Anybody that gives me headache, I want to know how I should, uh -uh. you are blocked. So don't even call me. If you call me, you don't get me. Just know you are blocked. I ain't got no time for too much. Time. I got a lot to do. Sunday service, uh, Tuesday Bible study, authentic talk, taking care of children, going to work. I just came from work. And in the, in, we meet an accident on the road. That's why I was late today. What can I do? I was still rushing to come and do what God called me to do. Then why would I have time for, for chicken life that uh, gossip? We should be very careful who comes to our relationship and tell us, oh, your husband do this. Oh, your wife do that. We're coming to that. That will come. Because all those people that come to tell you, your husband do this, your wife do this, they are just hatred. Hit, uh, uh, they are just uh, uh, set an accord and say because they want you, they want to get what you have, but they don't have it, so they want to send you out of it. You can work with your work your relationship. For where life of the presumed victim is lost, the accused has the arm of the law to face. Some might also be sentenced to death. So when making choice of a spouse, when making choice of friendship, when making when making choice of relationship. Do not rest more on beauty. I can't emphasize this enough. Do not rest more on beauty or wet, richness, how pretty she is, the complexion, how tall he is, how manly he is, how his chest look. No, no. Let internal happiness be your goal, my brothers and sisters. Internal happiness is the best in life, particularly Looking at domestic violence, one will come to agree that none out of the spouse is free. Whether you are the one abusing or the one being abused, you are not free. Consequently, in conclusion, know your spouse. Let how you, you know, learn how you live after marriage. Make sure you know your spouse. And let how you live after marriage be the thoughts you think before marriage. 
Marriage is sweet on that day of marriage. Everybody's kissing, I love you. Uh, they're singing. People come in, they eat your food. You know, you do everything. But my brothers and sisters, after all the parties, you were alone with that man in the house, with that woman in the house, all by yourself. Think before, after marriage, decision taken on the altar of pity. Don't marry someone for pity. Because after all said and done, not too often I go live. Oh. Pity fantasy. Those are not good decisions for marriage. Those are most often not the best. Now let's go to, God bless you all as you join. Let's go to some comments that I'm seeing here. Let's start with um, Rakotis came and God bless you. Cotis as you come and Ikes came. And yeah, he said you are on point, Reverend Joy. He said people with uncontrollable temper indulge in domestic violence. He was just uh, emphasizing on the point that I said. People need to be uh, compatible before compatible before they have smooth relationship that is void of uh, domestic violence. You are true, my brother. And uh, the same thing Ike said, yeah, improper, uh, um, I'm not seeing this. Uh, yeah, a temper has domestic uh, violence and someone with such have to engage in violence if they have a hard temper. Hard temper is saying that hard temper can bring domestic violence. And so hallelujah, it is a great having this topic. Amen. What am I touching? And now my husband come and say, watch that temper. I, uh, I can destroy you. There is no victory between a spouse that have temper. Somebody shout hallelujah. And brother is just say amen. And he's running hallelujah. That's my running brother. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for you, my brother. He's a preacher on joy. Because I've told you guys, this is an interactive uh, 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 program. We don't just let a uh, 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 reverend talk or joy talk. No, we. I would I would do what God called me to do. And we all talk about it. And I read all the comments. I started that like last week and it was amazing. He said, you are in a marriage, not a competition. Uh-huh. My husband is saying this here. He said, everybody in marriage you are in a marriage you're not in a competition you you are spouse in love you are not there to compete with each other so you do the right thing to keep your marriage and work in your marriage and he can said either in marriage or ordinary relationship both person needs to study one another on their level of temperament temperament and that's what I said before. Amen. He's just saying for certain or that. Uh, my husband said domestic uh, violence, dom domestication and violence is a means to, to destabilize your life. Watch the anger. Watch the anger. Watch the anger because that will destabilize your life. So many marriages shattered because of domestic violence. That's what he just said. And my husband said, Love knows no wrong. And I think it's quoting a part, part of the Bible there. So love your spouse and you will not have reason to hurt them. Amen, somebody. That way you save yourself and you save your spouse. It's like what I said. If you are abusing people or you are being abused, both of you are going to get in trouble one day. So my husband is saying there, love knows no, and like second character said, love knows no wrong. You have to just love. When you are loving someone and loving someone, you're, you, there's no way the person will turn around and be hurting you when you're loving them. Unless the person is a devil or witchcraft or something. And if he does, then you run and leave them alone. You know what I'm saying? But when you keep on loving them, they will turn around and repent because that's why Jesus died for us for repentance. So your marriage will stay. So love, uh, your 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 partner and uh, he can write this again he said as a counselor psychologist i have researched the cause of domestic violence among us marriages that got shattered and one of the major cause is related to lack of love between couples Amen. I think that's where we end because we are saying, my husband just talk about love does not know wrong. 
that loves your neighbor, love your spouse and love him and love her and love him and love her, that that will not bring any hurt. Then conclusion, he can just said it all. That after his research, all he noticed that when you love, and I, I tell people all the time, I, you know, I remember the first time I, my husband met me when we are cutting, when we're dating, and uh, he said, what is your name? We come to a place when he said, what is your name? I said, actually, my name is Lover Girl. <laughs> I know you'll be laughing. <laughs> I said, he said, huh? I said, yeah, I got so much love to give, but I've never seen the right man, you know? When you give it to wrong people, they mess with it, you know? So, so, so what I did was to keep it and lock it and put the key in the deep ocean where nobody goes there but Jesus Christ only and myself. So I just go and worship God and do my work and he laughed so much on that day. And it, it looked like a joke, but that's not, not, that's not a joke actually. That is real. Real. It, love is something you give, but you have to give it to the right person who accepts it. Hmm? You have to give it to the right person who accepts it because one thing about love is uh, it's, you have to reciprocate. Anything in anything relationship, reciprocate it. When somebody be giving you love, sometimes even God himself will come and wake you up at night and say, hey, hey, are you okay? Are you so silly and selfish that somebody is giving you love? You know, you know, because God is into your relationship anytime where you're doing bad, where you're doing good. So when someone is giving you that love, you don't have a choice but to, to, to give it. And when I say that, he said, oh, okay. So that makes two of us too. I say, hey, man, somebody. So what am I trying to say? We have to be careful. The person we we take as our partner, as our spouse, as our friends, as our co-worker, we go close to them. Because domestic violence is real. Like hell is real. Heaven is real. Domestic violence is real, my brothers and sisters. Even as I'm teaching, let's joke apart. Somebody's dying for domestic violence. As I'm teaching right now, they are taking somebody in the cemetery because of domestic violence. As, I'm, as we're talking now, someone is about to go into the, the, the coffin because of domestic violence. My people pray for lack of knowledge. So do me a favor. The only favor you do for me, my brothers and sisters, share, share, and share. Share this video all over. Go into our YouTube channel. Take these videos. Share them on the Facebook Instagram, share. You know what? You're sharing to your partner. You're sharing to your neighbor. You're sharing to your friends. You don't know who you're sharing, but you share it to a place you rescue somebody from dying. You take somebody out of some, the person we, we escape death, escape domestic violence, escape hatred, escape beating, escape that hit. So mate, let's go and do the work that God has called about all of us to do. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. There is none like you. There is none before you. You are worthy to be praised. Like I always say, we are open for counseling and prayers for anyone, anyone that wants us to help them in asking for God's help. We don't do this by ourselves. We do with God. God give us the strength. Give us the wisdom. In God's help, in your marriage, in your relationship, in everything that you're going through, we are open. And you can reach us through our website divine dash uh, soldiers dash uh, uh, nation and you can reach or you can message us on if you're on facebook you just message us on facebook messenger we get your message there too we call you we don't, you don't have to spend your money you can still get us on our whatsapp on 301-323-3044 my name again is reverend jo dr joy i'm going to want you to the general overseer and the shepherd leader of the vice president of christ nation church maryland usa thank you thank you thank you so much we are grateful for you joining and listening to us today join us on our life-changing programs where destinies are being restored be a part of our powerful bible studies my brothers and sisters where we are teaching and fire prayer every tuesday at 10 a.m u.s uh, 3 p.m nigeria and 2 p.m europe on that case after you join we have three powerful prayer we pray on that day and we're inviting you on a on a december uh, uh, friday every friday we have what we call authentic talk which is this program start 10 a.m u.s 3 p.m. Nigeria and 2 a.m. Europe. And this is what we do. We, we touch hot topics, you know, 
topics that people don't want to talk about because we want to we're serving god we're serving his people we're serving humanity we're helping humanity to come out from that debt we're helping humanity so that satan will not come and steal and kill and destroy no more we're helping humanity so that they will not uh, lack knowledge because my people pray for lack of knowledge but whatever you know you will not lack it you will not die for it we're helping humanity and you can still join us on every last friday of every month where we usher the new month and send the old month out and you go into the new month with all blessing and joy i don't know about you but it's been happening for a lot of us and there will be a lot of miracle and testimony then our sunday service which is 11 a.m us uh 4 p.m nigeria and 2 p.m europe i am so happy that you join us and i'll be with you next week same time same station it is from all different areas of christ nation church um u.s maryland u.s and god bless you mightily father we thank you we bless your holy name we worship you for everybody that have joined daddy they might not be in the position of domestic violence but a friend and a neighbor their friend in the facebook their friend in, in youtube there are people someone that will just grab that video and say yes you send it because of me please help them to evangelize and just just click and click and like and and comment so that they will touch life we're here to touch life like you said go make disciples we are here to make them so that person that was about to die we're here to save their life so make your people to share the people that have not come to come and watch later in the name of jesus i cover everybody with blood of jesus and i will see you guys again on sunday tuesday and friday amen somebody Mwah. love you all thank you everyone for joining i am so happy i will finish i say i love you but god loves you more thank god it's friday i got a lot to do but thank god it's friday bitch a hug bitch a hug my husband is messing always messing with me on that bitch a hug god bless you all and bye for now i don't want to leave you all but i have to go because time is money and we want you to go to your family so we'll come in do it and go bye now god bless you god bless